In July of 2023, I got this MacBook Pro M2 14 inch, and while I never made a video on it or really announced anywhere that I got it, I've been using it ever since then. Here's my thoughts on this computer for a long term review. I also want to note that this video script was mostly written before the new MacBook Pros came out, but I will be covering those later in this video. I got this computer to replace my 16 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro, which seems like a bad decision. But my M1 MacBook Pro had some enclosure damage, and I also wanted to downsize back to the 14-inch laptop, as I found myself using the 16-inch MacBook Pro a lot less than I wanted to. I also wanted the extra performance that the new M2 Pro processor allowed for, so I went for the M2 MacBook Pro 14-inch with 1TB of storage and 16GB of RAM. I got the second configuration tier on Apple's website when this computer was still being sold. Since I got this laptop, it's been used a lot more than even my Mac Studio, since it's a portable machine and it can be taken anywhere, and there is a noticeable performance difference while using Final Cut Pro. I've actually edited more videos in the last few months on my MacBook Pro than I have on my Mac Studio, and for about the past month, everything that I've been doing has been through the MacBook Pro, as I have not even touched my Mac Studio since mid-October. The reason these new MacBook Pros are so popular is because they're done right. The main parts of this computer that are interacted with by the user are designed perfectly, such as the keyboard which is perfected, Apple switched from the old butterfly keyboard in 2019, and they've been slowly improving on the keyboard since then, and this keyboard is great. It's easy to type on, the keys feel great, it's relatively quiet, and the keycaps themselves just feel great. The trackpad is also something that is being interacted with a lot by the user, and it's great as well. It's a glass surface which doesn't click down, but it vibrates to simulate a click, which Apple's been doing since 2015. And it's much better than any other trackpad as it's less likely to fail, it's quieter, and it's easier to click. The display is another very important part of a laptop, and Apple made this display as well as possible. It's a mini LED panel with a 120Hz ProMotion refresh rate, and the bezels are extremely thin, but it still manages to have a pretty good webcam in the notch, and the rounded corners really tie the whole package together and make this laptop's display feel just as well built as the rest of the computer. The port selection is perfect too. There's three USB Type-C ports, which I'd like to see a fourth, but it's not a big deal. And there's also HDMI, an SD card slot, and a MagSafe connector for charging, and even a headphone jack. The MagSafe charger was really something that I missed when they removed it on the USB-C only MacBooks as it's just a tougher connector and it makes more sense to use. The battery life has been top notch too, lasting me longer than any Intel laptop ever has. And something that most people don't mention is how accurately the computer reports the battery. And on my unit, it is pretty accurate, being about 4% lower than it actually reports. But on most Windows laptops I've used, it's more like 8-12% to of a difference. I can get more than a full day use out of this laptop if I'm just doing basic work in a web browser, or even some video editing in Final Cut Pro. But if I push this machine a bit more, I can drain the battery in 2-3 to three hours pretty consistently. The battery health reports 99% after about 4-5 or five months of use, and I haven't noticed any major battery degradation at this point. Apple has done speakers and microphones pretty well for the last couple of years, and this year is no exception. This computer has kept the bar high with these components being top quality. I rarely use the microphone, but when I have to, it never disappoints. It's a clear microphone, and it's even better than some of the cheap USB microphones that I've used in the past. As for performance, this computer has kept up perfectly. Once again, I have very little complaints in this department. I wish that I got more RAM, as this configuration only has 16GB, but that's my only drawback. This machine has been very quick, and even after the new MacBook Pros have came out, I've yet to see any slowdown like I did on my 2021 MacBook Pro. I want to note that I do work with multiple 4K timelines on Final Cut Pro at a time, so I generally like to use a computer with a lot of power, but this computer seems to have more power than even my Mac Studio, which is one of the reasons why I use this over the Mac Studio. Even finding small issues is hard to do on this laptop. I can name a couple off the bat, one being the paint storability, as my MacBook has gotten a couple of scratches and I do have the Space Gray model, even though it's never been dropped. And secondly, the keycaps tend to wear down and they get shiny really easily. Those two issues are minor though, and they're both cosmetic and they don't affect how I use the computer. As for this new M3 generation of MacBook Pros, I have no incentive to upgrade, as I'm already getting the performance that I need, and my MacBook Pro is more than good enough for what I use it as. 
As for anyone looking to buy an early 2023 M2 MacBook Pro over a late 2023 M3 MacBook Pro, if you know what you're getting into, it's a good idea. But as I always say, used devices and previous gen devices can be dicey sometimes. I don't regret buying my MacBook Pro in July, as I got it pretty much mid-cycle, and I think that I got a good trade-in discount on my 16-inch MacBook Pro. And after about 5 months of using this computer on a daily basis, I can easily say that I don't regret buying this computer, and I'm glad that I made the decision to get it. It's a really good computer, and if Apple's past is anything to consider, it will comfortably last me as long as I'd want it to. And when I upgrade, it will still hold a good value if I trade it into Apple or if I sell it. I also want to address the display size downgrade and whether or not I miss the 16-inch MacBook Pro. I don't. In June 2023, I took my 16-inch MacBook Pro on a flight. And that was when I started to realize that I was jumping to use my iPad Pro more frequently because it was smaller and lighter. And I ended up buying the 14-inch MacBook Pro shortly after that experience. I really enjoy having a smaller laptop as I've been using this MacBook more, and if it was the bigger 16 inch model, I would still be using my iPad Pro primarily. I don't really miss the extra screen real estate, as I don't really use my laptops in a way that takes advantage of every pixel like that, but I can understand why people buy the 16 inch MacBook Pro. The battery life also isn't a big thing for me, as I remember how my old Intel MacBooks would last 1-2 to two hours on a charge, and this 14 inch beats every Intel MacBook I've ever used in terms of battery life. But with all that said, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, a like is appreciated. If you want to see more content like this, you can subscribe. And uh, goodbye.